Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Saturday the 1st, Sunday the 2nd and Monday the 3rd of July. Um, weekend in July, not much going on. There was a bit on Sundays but I, I didn't bother making a video over the weekend. I'm just doing a round up today on Monday. So what have we got to talk about? Well, here we go. This is from footballarangi.com. It's a Dutch football blog. It's English language. Uh, so it hasn't been translated by my browser. This was posted yesterday on Sunday. Obviously, um, the Sunday paper's starting to put stuff out. Isn't this fun? If you you look there on the right, isn't that fun now? Twitter, Twitter's um, Twitter's uh, gone a bit crazy, isn't it? Um, today, if you're outside of it, you can't see anything, and if you do have an account, you're limited into to what you can see. Nanny Twitter said, oh, that's enough Twitter for you today, son. Brush your teeth and go to bed. Um, I think Elon Musk will see trying to make some money out of Twitter. And he's probably going to price it up like a mobile contractor price plan. thousand tweets a month. And if you go over that, you got to pay. Um, just a reminder, uh, if you're new, uh, this, this channel's not on Twitter. I, uh, I can see Twitter, or I could. Uh, there are two accounts... Uh, on Twitter that go by Daily Meal. Well, that was put up uh, before I started this channel. I didn't know that that was there. So if someone was tweeting during COVID and they just put that, put that, uh, started out to do something during COVID. Um, and the other one is called Meal Daily, but the, the hashtag I think is Daily Meal, Meal Daily. Now that is more interesting. That is nothing to do with this channel. Uh, in fact, it's a little bit of a scam. Um, I think someone probably grabbed the Twitter handle thinking that maybe they could sell it to me in the future. It's like, uh, you, no, go fuck yourself. Um, but um, I think it's some, some kid who makes YouTube videos and he thinks all you got to do is make videos and they blow up and you can become famous and that's how it works. And he's... Trying to get, he's trying to scam other people and other channels and stuff. Um, so yeah, don't get involved in that if they message you. It's not me. It's not this channel. Now let's get onto the actual uh, what we all care about is Zion Fleming. So obviously, Mill frustrates Burnley's pursuit of Fleming. According to Football International, Burnley has had three bids turned down so far for Zion Fleming of Mill. Uh, after their promotion to the Premier League, Burnley are trying to strengthen their attack with the rival Fleming. Had an excellent campaign in the championship last season. According to Vote Royal International, Burnley's opening a bid of 8 million euros uh, was rejected, and since then they've returned with two more offers, which have also been swept aside. The latest are reportedly over 10 million. So I'm guessing first bid 8 million, second bid 9 million, third bid 10 million. Uh, Fleming, who moved to Millwall from Fortuna Sittard last summer, would like to make the step up to the Premier League, uh, and he is waiting for a resolution. Interesting there. So it seems like Fleming does want to leave, to, to go to Burnley. Um, Fleming scored 15 goals and added 3 assists last season. He has a deal until 2026 with Millwall, while Fortuna Sittard will get part of a fee due to a sell-on. And there's a tweet there. I think it's, it's embedded in the thing so we can actually see it, which is interesting. Uh, now, so they're quoting a story, Vukbo International. So let's go to that and let's read that. Now, this is translated because this is Dutch language. It's been translated by Microsoft Edge, the browser that I'm using now. Yes, I do use Microsoft Edge. Uh, Mill will frustrate Burnley with rejected Fleming millions. This is from Din, Tim Van Dugen. Uh, the possible transfer of Zion Fleming to Burnley will be a long-term one. Burnley have made a big impact, but a transfer is still a long way off. Mill brushed off multiple bids, much to the frustration of the Premier League club. That's what sources at both clubs report. So Volkball International are saying they have sources at both ends of this potential deal. At the Burnley end and at the Mill end. What does that mean? Does that mean someone at Millwall is involved at? It's not necessarily, like I said. The other thing I just read from Football RNJ saying basically Fleming would be interested in going straight to the Premier League. Now, you only live once. What are we waiting for? Let's go to the Premier League. So they, when they say sources at both clubs, it doesn't mean someone involved 
at Millwall. It could be Fleming, Fleming's agent. They're basically on the Millwall side of this deal, are they not? Um, and they would go and speak to the Dutch press. And they would also know all the, in, all the ins and outs of the deal. Uh, the bids and the value of them and what not. Uh, Burnley's opening bid was around €8 million, Euros, excluding bonuses, but that was unceremoniously rejected by Millwall. Two more bids were then made, which were also not high enough, although the clubs have come closer, a deal is not yet in sight. Millwall have lowered the asking price of €15 million. Euros. So here we go. According to Vote for International, Millwall slapped the price tag on Zion Fleming, saying, pay this money, you can have them straight away, it's €15 million. Euros. Which is what a lot of people, uh, the value I see going around on the internet, a lot of people say, well, 15 million. Well, that's euros, but what would that be in pounds? I don't know. I'm not a globalist. Uh, I don't really look at the exchange rate. I haven't left the country in many years. Um, so I don't know what 15 million uh, euros is. Um, I think, the, is the euros under the pound now, or is it over the pound? Uh, but I've also not agreed to Bernie's bid of reportedly more than 10 million. So Mill said 15 million, he's yours. Done, deal, deal done. And Burnley have gone 9 million. And then Mill said no. And then they've gone 10 million. And they go, no, 15 million. So after the third bid rejected bid, things come to a standstill for a few days. But in any case, Fleming is clear and would like to make the step up to the Premier League. He is currently in Alicante, Spain, where Mill has held a training camp and is quietly waiting developments. He's a very good player, so I'm not surprised his interest from the Premier League. Mill manager Gary Rout told the English media of the Fleming situation. Fortuna Sittard is also following the situation with great interest because the higher the final transfer fee, the more money goes to Sittard. Uh, the club has a resale percentage. Fleming's contract runs until the summer of 2026. Mill paid around 1.7 million euros for Fleming last summer. He accounted for 15 goals and three assists last season. And that's the thing. A lot of people will put point a meal and saying well you paid 1.7 million you probably even didn't even pay the whole money yet it's probably an installment that you have you haven't fully paid off yet and someone's offering you 10 million and you're going you're turning your nose off it like, that's an easy profit for like you got 15 goals from the lad three assists you got you nearly got in the playoffs you fucked up on the final day um and you've literally made 10 times your money or eight or eight times your money or um like, what's the problem? And so, well, that was his first year. You think he's going to improve on that? Yeah, and not only that, he missed the first month. Um, and we we do we do genuinely, sincerely want to fucking get promoted and get in the get in the playoffs. And him not being here could impact that in a negative way. Um, Maybe, maybe not. Uh, a lot of people thought Je the Jed Wallace leaving would, would screw us over. It didn't, but that's because we got Fleming. So the Wallace situation turned out fine because we got Fleming. How's the Fleming situation gone? Because then who are we going to get? Are we going to get Scott Twine? I don't know. Uh, uh, now, according to the South London Press, here we go, londonnewsonline.co.uk, we all have rejected four bids from Burnley for Star Attacker, and this was put out on, sun, on Sunday. So this was kind of in, I think it came out after these uh, situation when they're saying there's three bids have been rejected. Uh, Richard Corley, the man in the know at the Mill Win, said that uh, 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 four bids have been rejected for Star Attacker Zion Fleming. So here we go, let's have a read of this. A uh, Mill have rejected four bids from Premier League New Boys Burnley for Zion Fleming. We, re we reported last month that any deal for the 24-year-old Dutch man would significantly break their record outgoing, which is the eight million that Middles were paid for George Savile in January 2019. A uh, Fleming reported back for pre-season training last week. The Amsterdam-born number 10 scored 15 goals in a highly impressive first campaign in English football. The South London Press asked Mill manager Gary Rout on Wednesday about Burnley's attempts to land Fleming. He said. Oh, he's a, very, he's a very good player. It doesn't surprise me that there's interest from the Premier League. Uh, Fleming cost £1.7 when the deal when he signed last summer from Fortuna Sittard. And there's no re release clause in his then deal. Uh, Burnley have already signed Jordan Bayer for a fee of around £30 million for Bristol Monchon Gladbach and paid in the region of £7 million for West Brom defender Dara O'Shea. So they don't even mention the rejected bids in the story. Well, in the first line. 
and in the headline, it's it it's doubled up in the headline and in the thing, but they don't mention the fees, which the other the other thing does. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. Now, do you believe all of this? I think it's look, it's guaranteed. I think it's um, I think it's like seventy five percent certain that that Zion Flynn is going to be going uh, to Burnley. Don't you? Um, now, I would say this is you got to look and see. What have we got to look and see? When the first friendly first uh, friendly start, where's Zion? Is he playing? How how many how long does he play? How many minutes does he play? Because we got we got a game against Fortuna Sita that I'm sure he would like to play in. It was literally set up for him, like your old club versus your new club. What are we gonna uh, are we gonna say to Fortuna Sita? Hang on, let's have a friendly against Burnley now. Like, so I think you'll see him not really participate in preseason games. He might get a few minutes here and there, uh, but I think he'll be wrapped up in cotton wool. I think he'll start against Fortuna Sittard, and then I think you'll see he'll get subbed off after half time, maybe 55, 60 minutes. Uh, massive applause, slow, slowly walking off, massive applause to everyone. It'll be like, uh, normally in friendlies, they, they sub a load of players at the same time. I think he'll just get subbed off on his own. He'll go to all the fans, the home fans, the away fans. Massive, massive uh, round of applause because he knows what we probably f assume and think that he knows it will be leaving, and it will be do the done deal will be done after that game, which I think is it, it's 27th of July, 29th of July. So literally late in the day, which I, which is why I think we're being linked with Burnley players because probably Burnley have been promoted to the Premier League. They've got loads of Loads of squad players that are decent championship players. Um, and they can't, not really much useful in the Premier League. So they obviously didn't want to... Now, here's the thing. Burnley, they obviously want to stay up, but it's not guaranteed. They could uh, get relegated quite easily again. Um, although there are a few basket clubs uh, in the Premier League. It's not, not certain um, that they can't stay up, but uh, you would think they would be favourites to go back down. Um, so obviously, if they loan the players out to, say... Mill Wall, hello. Um, maybe two players on loan. We got two players on loan from Leeds last season. Why not Scott Twine and the player that we were linked with now today? This was linked yesterday, Sunday. Uh, Mill will take interest in Burnley, man. He could be used as part of a potential Zion Fleming deal. So obviously, if Burnley aren't going to put the price up, we'll say, okay, well, we'll take. These two players on loan, and you can pay their wages. How about that? Um, so maybe that's an option. Because then, obviously, if one of them, if one of them, is Scott Twine, who is a, basically the replacement for Zion Fleming, then it doesn't matter if he leaves late in the day after that last friendly against Fortuna Sittard, because we know we're going to get this other guy on loan now. The only thing he refuses, or if he gets uh, injured, then that's kind of that screwed, then it. Uh, but here we go. This is from the 72.co.uk. Mill taking interest in Burnley Man could use as part of the potential sign deal. Uh, Mill joined the race to sign uh, Burnley defender Luke McNally on loan, says Alan, Max, uh, Alan Nixon. And the Lions could have the upper hand over Coventry City. McNally, 24, joined Burnley from Oxford United last summer. He made just two championship appearances. The first half of the season, though, before joining Coventry City on loan for the second half of the campaign. So that's Coventry City, who, by the way, got into the Premier League uh, with a late end of season push. So maybe this guy was, uh, I don't know much about him. Maybe he was, uh, well, it says here, uh, McNally Sean, who racked up 22 league out into the Sky Blues, playing a key role in helping them to reach the player final. Well, I'll have some of that. Let's have a player who can get, help you get into the player final. That'd be nice. Uh, now, though, Alan Nixon has reeled on his paid Patreon page, say that quickly, uh, that commentary are keen on a return for McMally this summer, but that parent club, Burnley, don't seem to favour that. Um, don't know why not. Uh, Nixon also adds that Millwall are keen on a potential deal for McNally, and that the Clarets could potentially use McNally as part of a deal to tempt Millwall into selling Zion Fleming. 
Uh, Vincent Company side have now seen four bids rejected for the Dutchman this summer. Uh, does it carry on down here? Yep. Uh, McNally showed with Coventry that he's a defender who can more than cut it at championship level. And he did so with a team that reached the player final. And that should make McNally even more attractive to Gara outside. And given the Fleming situation, McNally to then could be a very realistic move. But it could also mean that the Lions have to part ways with their star man. Mill selling Fleming still seemed unlikely, but if they could get McNally potentially on a permanent deal uh, as part of the move, it could work out well for all involved. Indeed. Well, we've got Nisbet up front now. Um, we've got the youngsters coming through. Um, they have a lot of potential and promise. Uh, and we haven't really seen it because they haven't really played, but Imaku, I'm impressed with him. When I've seen him play for the under-21s through the middle, uh, but in the first team, he seems to be on the left. And Romain Esse as well. So we do have some decent options up front. But our defence, um, how's that? I think that does need improving, doesn't it? Uh, you can see when Cresswell dropped out, that was probably the start of our problems. So signing this McNally might solve that problem and then give us a base, a uh, defensive base to push on. Obviously, we signed uh, Joe Bryan. Uh, no one, so with Joe Bryan, everyone's saying how great uh, his deliveries are and how good he is going forward. I haven't really heard anyone say that he's a good defender. Um, so, is he an improvement in defence? We will see. Maybe they start with Joe Bryan uh, when we attack, and if we've got a lead, we'll bring uh, we'll bring Murray, Murray Wallace off the bench to, to shore it up. I don't know. Maybe that's an option. So there you go. Now this is the second guy that's been touted um, um, as part of the Burnley deal, Burnley player. The other one was Scott Twine, I mentioned before previously. So that suggests to me that discussion. there are discussions in the background. I, I certainly think that Zion Fleming will be leaving. And like I said, I think it's going to be after that Fortuna Sith up game. Um, now, talking of games... Here we go from Millwall, doing the business proper, um, getting the kickoffs changed early doors, uh, as expected. We've got home games on Boxing Day and Easter, and as usual, uh, which has been uh, the way, they've been moved to early kickoffs. Um, I think to allow the players to go home and have a Christmas, and certainly the coaching staff as well. I think Gary Rout prefers uh, this this uh, early kick off on Boxing Day, um, but three of Mill's fixtures have had their kickoff times changed. Um, not the days, just the kickoff times. Um, one of them is an away game and two at the Den. Uh, this is from MillFC.co.uk. So kickoff times for Mill Skybet Championship fixtures against Birmingham City, QPR and West Bromwich Albion have been rescheduled. Uh, the Lions travelled to St Andrews on Saturday the 2nd of September. Uh, originally scheduled to commence at 3 p.m., we'll now kick off at 12:30. 12:30. So I, I assume that that's on police advice. Um, I, I don't know if you know the story of Stephen Skinner. Um, you look into that. He's uh, got attacked at Birmingham and uh, had a bit of a hospital. Uh, he was in hospital for quite a while, and I, I'm pretty sure to this day he's still not fully recovered, which is a shame. Um, but I'm sure because of that situation, uh, the situation that led to that, um, we've got this now early kickoff. Uh, Boxing Day sees Gary Rauer and his side welcome QPR to the Den, which will now kick off at 1 p.m., two hours earlier than initially planned. So this is a Millwall decision, I think, just to kick off earlier for Christmas. Uh, and Mill's Easter weekend fixture at the Den against West Bromwich Albion on Good Friday, 29th of March, 2024. Will now also kick off at 1 p.m. So next year, next March, Mill have already got it sorted. So there you go. How much notice do you need? There you go. You've got how um, nine months or whatever, how long that is. I can't do the quick math. Um, so there you go. Um, three kickoff changes. Although th that doesn't mean they're set in stone. If they get selected for television, they could change again. Um, so there you go. Now. We all wanted to know what was going on with Truman. Colonel Truman, who's that? Well, he's, he's, exactly, he's the third choice goalkeeper. 
uh, who hasn't even played a game. But Mill were reporting, oh, Mill were reported that the under 21 signed this goalkeeper and this other goalkeeper and Seb Drozd and they're announcing all these signings. I was like, well, what about this guy? He was in the pictures at training. Well, here he is. He signed on. Now, interestingly, um, he signed a two year deal. Now, why is that interesting? Well, it's interesting because he signed a two year deal, not just a one year deal. I'm, I'm suggesting that he wanted a two year deal. And that was what was holding up. But not only that, but that Mill told us it was a two-year deal. They never t tell us the length of the, the deals now. It's a thing they keep it close to their chest. Obviously, it leaks out. It's, it's not. You can't keep any secrets these days. Not with the internet and whatnot. Um, and uh, yeah, two-year deal. So this suggests, are we going to see Bart Bielkowski on his way at the end of next season? Is his contract up at the end of the next season? Or this season coming up? Is that what that's about? Is he sitting and waiting in the wings to uh, move into the number two position? Or even the number one? If George Long uh, carries on how he's carrying on. But this is from milwfc.co.uk. Goalkeeper Conal Truman has extended his stay at the club until the summer 2025. Weird. Like I said, weird. They never say how long the contracts are. The 27-year-old shot stopper signed for the Lions back in August of 2022 and completes Mill's first team goalkeeping trio, including George Long and Bartosz Piotrowski. Goalkeeping coach Andy Marshall, who has worked with Truman at Birmingham City as well as at Mill, said, Well, I'm really pleased that Connell will be remaining at the club for the upcoming season. Um, I've really enjoyed working with him since his arrival. He's a terrific work ethic, and he's a valued member of the squad. Truman and the rest of the first team squad are set for the first day of pre-season training camp in Spain today. With updates to follow on millwfc.co.uk. And he is, uh, we've got the squad numbers now, 27. Uh, we'll see in the pictures coming up, as we do have pictures from training. I'm sure you wait for, for all of these. Here we go. Uh, Danny McNamara there, number two. Number two. Uh, the Lions have landed in Spain to kickstart a week of work ahead of the 23-24 campaign. Uh, based in Alicante, the opening session on Monday morning was a circuit in the gym, and you can view the best pictures below. And here they go. Look at this. Leaked. They leaked it. So if you're in Alicante, you know where they are now, and I'm guaranteed, guaranteed that some there will be Mill fans there tomorrow for pictures, trying to get pictures, trying to get signatures, and all of the rest of it. It's at the La Fincha Golf and Spa Resort. Five stars. Nice. Um, so here we go. Leaked it. They leaked it themselves. They leaked it themselves. Uh, here you go. Here's all the players there. Can you see who's there and who isn't there? Um, not really. Not really. Um, George Evans there. The new guy, Joe Bryan, on the left there. 15. So he's got the number 15. Poor old Duncan Watmore there. I, I hope they got the SPF out for him. There's Zion Fleming in the background there. He's not. Is that? He doesn't look too happy. Um, I guess he's just waiting for his, a call from his agent saying the deal's done. You can piss off. Uh, um, and it does look like I'm not being weird, but does it look like those shorts have pockets? Because it looks like the players have got mobile phones in their pockets. George Evans and Duncan Wanmore got like squares in their pockets. Um. So the, the training shorts have pockets today. Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah. Um, there you go. There's another picture that they've leaked. La Fincha. Get that in Google Maps. Get down there tomorrow if you're in Alicante. There's the new guy, Kevin Isbitt, wearing number seven. Number seven. Who had that on your bingo card? There's Nino Adamalakai now. Is that a tank top or is he just... Is he just hiked up his t-shirt because his muscles are so buff? Um, I think he's just hiked it up to, to like flex on everyone around. Um, there's George Evans there, still around. Number six. Hey, Diamond and Macca, number 22. Um, again, there's Iron Fleming there, eyes closed, not smiling. Um... Oh, and that's a mirror. I thought that was like the whole team there on the floor. That's a mirror. 
uh, as Bartok Biakovsky. We got Billy Mitchell, Romain Essay. Oh, there's Zion Fleming looking interested. What are they playing there? They're kicking a tennis ball around. Um, and they ha seem to have area socks. Are those Mill branded socks or just area socks? It looks like. Um, white white socks. There's Hutch number four. Uh, the new guy. Bryant, 15. George Honeyman, still 39. Uh, number, not age. And we're back round again. But don't worry, because we have more pictures. Can you believe they put up more pictures? So that was in the gym. Now we're going outside. We've got some uh, in the sun. Like I said, I hope they got the SPF on poor old Ginger Dunk and what more. Uh, after morning in the gym, Garrett's team trained outside. And they touched grass for the first time since touching down in Spain. Ah, okay, no, actually, I think that is a specifically designed, I mean, what do you call it, a tank top, gilet? Because you can see there, Chinocli's got it, Adam malico has got it, and George Honeyman's got it. Unless they cut it off with scissors, they cut their t-shirt with scissors. Um, I think that that is a specific thing. Um, yeah, there they are. Is that grass? That looks like AstroTurf to me. Um, Kevin is a bit, yeah, that's that's not grass. That's, that's AstroTurf. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a tank top, isn't it? Look, they got different. So they, they get that as well. Is that going to be on sale in a club shop? All you muscle men out there, you will, will you be able to buy this? Um, I think that is a pocket. You can see there on that Dan Mac, he's got a pocket where the stripe comes and bends. That's that's where the pocket is. Um, so the, the shorts have pockets. Um, kind of weird. What was that for? I, I guess that's just training for the training. Yeah, I don't even want match you match shorts with pockets in. There's Zion Fleming there, still getting stuck in. Please don't get injured. You're you're worth ten million. Um, there you go, Vogel Summer. Again, he's a little bit ginger as well, isn't he? I he's got the SPF on. Um, uh, there you go, Ryan Leonard. All very uh, they all look like they all look decent shape, don't they? They're all trying hard. Um, Seb draws there. Um, unless there's some kind of filter that the geezer's been put on the photos where it puts muscles on, they all look pretty um, um, what would you call it? Well defined, muscly, muscular, mus muscular, muscular. That muscularly, really, really. Um, and we're back around to the beginning. So there you go. Um, yeah, not bad, not bad. Um, looking good. Now, moving on to this from SouthwarkNews.co.uk. Uh, Mill manager reveals who is the line's best 1,500 meter runner. Because I'm sure you all, we've all been thinking that, like. It's all very well about wanting them to play football. Who can fucking run around a lot? Let's, we want to know that. Who's also good in the egg and spoon race? Uh, and the sack race? You know what I mean? Let's have a little uh, school Olympics that, on the den. Down at the den before the pre first pre-season training game. He's like a machine. No one's managed to beat him yet. Do you want to guess? Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. I haven't even read this yet. I just looked this up. I'm going to say it's George Evans. Um, because he must be there for, for a reason. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's Murray Wallace. So Murray Wallace is Mill's best 1,500 metre runner. He has won the race in every pre-season that Gary Rat has been at the club. Wallace 30 covers the distance under 5 minutes. Won it again this summer. Despite being out of action since April 15. Um, yeah, I don't know if you know this. It's very notorious. Footballers really don't like running around. Especially in training, uh, and uh, especially in pre-season. So, I uh, know when I was a, in a youth team, having to run around the pitch before we even kicked a ball was literally fucking death. Uh, uh, like really not good at all. Like burn you, burning your lungs, breathing in the cold air. 
Um, but uh, yeah, uh, the squad returned to preseason training last week, and the run is one of the ways to test the players' physical conditions. Murray Wallace has won it every single year, right? Said when asked by the news then who was the quickest. There have been a few pretenders to the throne, but to be fair to Muzzle, he's seen off quite a few challenges. Off in this year, even after being injured at the end of last season, he actually beat his own best time. And that's the sort of standard and level we're looking for that people want to push on, want to get better. Uh, in that sort of scenario, Muzzle comes into his own. He's like a machine. No one's managed to beat him yet. And some players are more explosive, some players will struggle with that kind of distance. But some players can run all day. Uh, it's a good benchmark to see how the players have been over the summer. And who's enjoyed themselves. Well, yeah, like you said, um, running all day. Well, that's the thing with lost this, uh, long distance is that you're a steady pace. What we need is people can sh sprint back when our when we're attacking forwardly, and we give the ball away cheaply, and then bush it's down our end, and we get fucked. We need sprinters. We don't need fifteen hundred meter runners. We need bombers who are going to bomb back when we fuck it up up front. Um, so, there you go. Now, uh, we're going to finish with this. Wish me luck. We're going again with the Geordie accent. Oh, uh, we're not little old Millwall anymore. Lions comfortable with setting promotion achievable target. Millwall, this is from uh, LondonNewsOnline.co.uk, South London Press of Webline. Uh, Millwall will not be downplaying their championship promotion ambitions this season. That is the verdict of Lions club captain, Sean Hutchinson, as the South London club gear up for their seventh successive campaign in England's second tier. Millwall twice finished eighth under boss Garra, as well as seventh last time around, before three defeat to Blackburn on the final day, crushing their top six prospects. And centre-back Hutchinson readily admits that the days of the Lions only aiming for consolidation are long. Don. Well, under Gallagher, uh, we, we've always been there or thereabouts, he told the South London Press. You know, by I man, like the start of last season is where we were not little old Mill anymore. Uh, we were allowed to talk about trying to get promoted, and we did, to be fair. Uh, we, we had, well, you know, uh, we had our expectations of where we thought we would be and the levels we set ourselves. It's no different this season, uh, you know. Uh, we've got a really solid squad and a core of, uh, you know, really good players. Obviously, we're going to bring in some uh, really good quality, new signings. And they get time in pre-season to gel with us, uh, you know. Uh, they can fit in well and they can add uh, more quality to an already pretty decent squad. Uh, why, I man? Uh, we've definitely got to be focused on higher up the table, you know. It's not just a mediocre mid-table finish. We've got to try and build on every season. It's difficult, you know. Uh, because teams have their good seasons and their off seasons, but we've been quite consistent uh, under Gary Rowan. Uh, and why I, you know, um, I don't see why this season again, you know, we can't be the same. Oh dear. And on that note of the world's shittest Geordie accent, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.